Welcome to a brand new season of ESL Talk. We are so excited to be kicking off our new season with lots of great guests, amazing topics, tips, and knowledge for you to be even better teachers. And best of all, lots more regular content. Yeah, if you haven't already, please take a look at our website, esltalk.com. That's ESL dash or hyphen talk.com, where you can find all of our previous episodes from seasons one to three for free, uh, as well as find out more about us and join us for even more content on Patreon. Mm-hmm. Yes. And as a patron, you can get early access to new episodes, extra content, one-to-one monthly teaching webinars, mentoring, and exclusive free merchandise by joining us on Patreon at patreon.com forward slash ESL talk. And we are really pumped to start off our brand new season covering the topic of building a connection in the online environment. Yes. As more and more of us start teaching online and have done for a while now, we need to really be able to better connect with our students and clients, understand their needs and deliver great teaching that meets their goals. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Yes. And our two experts from Jam with Confidence are Jesse and May, and they will be sharing the how, why and what we need to follow in order to successfully connect in the online environment. Yes, looking forward to that part of today's episode. Mm -hmm. So let's talk ourselves a little bit about this topic, Faye, um, Mm -hmm. and this idea of connection. So when we talk about connection, Faye, what exactly do we mean? Hmm, Like for me, I think connection needs to be more about getting more personal with people, right? Um, Just creating those relationships that can be really tough online, uh, take a little bit more effort, but just feeling like you actually know a person or you know at least a little bit of them, not just as a teacher or as a student, but on a bit of a personal level too. What do you think about that, Daniel? Yeah, I think it's getting to know students and and being approachable, being friendly, uh, being able to have that rapport with them and building a connection in a way that you show that you care and that you want to help that student. Um, And again, making it genuine as well. We don't want to come across as too pushy or Mm -hmm. too personal. So I think making a connection is where you understand your learner or your student, you make a positive connection with them based on their needs, and you try to help them uh, with those needs. Mm -hmm, True. Why do you think that's especially important in the online space? Well, we can't meet face to face. So Mm -hmm. a lot of, um, you know, body language, even like, you know, um, expressions that we, we might say or things we might, we might do, they're not as easy to interpret or understand online. So Mm -hmm. I think if you really want to make a connection with someone, you have to put in more effort It involves more listening, more focus, um, and, and, and kind of training your brain in a different way. Cause when you're having a conversation, it's really easy to follow and to show you're attentive and that you're listening, but when you're in front of a computer or a phone, there's a lot of distractions. The screen is much smaller. The focus is not as, as set. So it's even more important than ever to really make sure we listen and understand what our students need. But what about mm-hmm. for you? What do you think? Yeah, I totally agree with that. And on, on top of that, I, I just keep thinking back to my face-to-face classes and how you'd often come into the classroom a bit earlier before your class starts. And if you take a break, even if it's one-to-one, you, you'd maybe stay in the classroom for a little bit. Students would come up to you, chat a little bit. At the end of class, maybe you'd have a student who was struggling who would come and ask for advice. You know, that kind of thing we don't do online. It's just mm-hmm. here's our class time, log into like Zoom, connect, class time done, bye-bye. So it is so hard. to. It's a lot harder to form those connections. And that's what I mean that we, it takes more effort. Right. It does, and yeah. it's so that's for me is the biggest difference between the online and the physical teaching space. Right. Yeah. Because it's sort of like we're just always on teacher mode. And I feel like yes. our students always feel like they're on student mode. Yes, we don't definitely. have those breaks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's true. And I, I, I think that within that as well, yeah, you miss a big part of that experience. And so do students. So you have to try to recreate that and recreating it through messaging or through emails or mm-hmm. through videos it's not quite the same. So you have to try to give that personal touch where you can. Exactly. And how do you think building that strong connection can help us? Well, I think even though a lot of us are teachers, we're not the most confident. We're not the most outgoing. Some of us are quite introverted Mm -hmm. and quite shy. And I've said this a lot of times, that sounds like me, but you might not believe it, but that is definitely (laughs) my case. Um, You know, in a situation like this with someone that I know who I've worked with and you know spoken to a lot like you Faye Mm -hmm. it's fine it's easy it's natural but if it's someone I've just met or it's a student that I'm going to be working with who's maybe 
made an investment of their time and money in me, I need to really deliver and do my best for that, for that student or that client. So that's why for me, it's really important to build that connection. And as teachers, we need to try and put ourselves out there as well. Mm-hmm. Would that's you say, true. yeah, I, I was just going to say, would you say that um, building a connection is only what happens in the class, in the session, or outside of that? What do you think? Yeah, so kind of building on what I said before, like if in face-to-face, you we definitely do that more outside the class time, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and even like running into students, I used to run into students all the time. And I remember them kind of it, like screaming sometimes when they saw me at the grocery store as if I was a celebrity. Mm-hmm. Like, what are you doing here? I'm like, yeah, I grocery shop too. But those were great opportunities for our students to see like our human side almost. And also, because in some cultures, teachers are held to a very high standard and, you Mm -hmm. know, there's sort of that gap. But also something for us to talk about in class or at break time. Oh, did you check out this new restaurant or that? Because we're all like in the same city even. Right. But when we when we build those connections outside the classroom in like in face to face situations, it really helps with all that. Mm -hmm. So for me now working more online, I, I do make an effort and I feel like a lot of my students now feel that connection towards me because I post a lot of stuff on my social right. media. That was my question. Um, my stories, yeah. right? And and you do that very well with yours as well. You you even do more than I do, like with posting, you do some regular posts on like pictures of your day-to-day life and like right. some like the, your photo dumps, which I really enjoy as well. And, <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. And I feel like that really helps that connection one way. Mm-hmm. But then it's kind of up to us to open that the other way so I often when I have students I actually try to follow them with my personal account on Instagram and I always uh, give my students my like telegram contact information so Mm -hmm. that they can message me directly and I encourage them to do so Um, and it just kind of like you said it doesn't really make up for it completely but I find it helps yeah right can you can you suggestion is that something you actively do you find I think you, you can't, you, like I said, you can't recreate that personal face-to-face um, relationship, but I think you can try your best to, to do as much as possible to kind of build that connection and all those things you've mentioned, the great tips. Uh, and yeah, you know, uh, now I'm much more open to having a conversation with someone. Maybe, you know, I'm never going to work with them. Maybe they're never going to need my help, but just to build that connection or have that conversation could right. open doors in the future. Oh, I remember talking to someone who's who can help with this, or I remember seeing a post that was about that, that could be really mm-hmm. useful. Maybe you should talk to Faye. Maybe you should talk to Daniel. Little yeah. things like that make a huge difference. I mean, it is time consuming and it, it does take effort, but it's definitely worthwhile, um, you know, thinking about what you do in the long term. Mm-hmm. So if you have groups like you do, Faye, that you teach, mm-hmm. um, how do you build connection between your classes, between your students? How do you do that among themselves? Right. So that's another thing that I've been using a lot. It's like Telegram mm-hmm. um, for in the case of my conversation classes. Um, I make sure everybody is on there, uh, even before class starts. So I open I, I some monthly sessions, right? So a week before the week of a class, I make sure everybody's there. Everybody introduces themselves and, and try to encourage them to talk to each other. Um, and if they have questions or if they see something that maybe we've learned in class, they try to share and then they can ask each other and comment. And um, I find that's kind of an easy way to build that connection because when they're in class again like when we were in in the face-to-face class you're always sitting next to somebody and if you're doing an exercise you can you're done with your exercise you can chat a little bit Mm -hmm. right and if you have Mm -hmm. your break you can um you know chat with that person or go grab coffee or something so i find that that's one way i've been able to build that connection and i've even had students um, set times outside of class to meet for practice or for just for chatting and, and as speaking partners. Um, so for me, I find that that has helped a bit in yeah. that case. Yeah. Have you had any experience with that as well? Um, with the groups that I have, one one of one of the members usually knows another member, so there's already that built-in um, comfortability and interaction. So that's always been nice. Um, like one group that comes to mind, uh, they're all in the medical profession, so they're all sharing similar experiences and they're comparing. So they already have that connection built in because it's like, right. oh, I know what you mean, or that happened to me, or actually this was my experience. So because they already have those shared experiences. And this is what I was going to come back to shared experiences are really powerful 
for building connection. Um, so I would say in the groups that I've had, again, I just kind of pull that out, elicit that a little bit more. Um, but, you know, if we have a little bit of time at the end, depending on the students and how well you know them, I mean, I have, I have a couple of um, groups, like I said, with Brazilian students who are very conversational. They like to, you know, have yeah. fun and enjoy their time. So we'll throw in some jokes. We might, you know, kind of go off topic for a few minutes. We looked at a map yesterday and talked about different places where they lived. And, you know, that those little things can really help um, building that connection, building that rapport and making the atmosphere and the classroom environment, the online classroom environment, uh, much more enjoyable. Yeah, that's true, because you can actually bring that into your almost like your lesson plan. Mm -hmm. and make it give them those opportunities yeah. to to connect and, and sometimes you find yourself spending five seven sometimes 10 minutes at the beginning of the class just catching up having that mm -hmm. small talk but it really is useful and it's really productive and it, and it helps students feel more confident in you more comfortable in you so that maybe when you come to the end of your six weeks or 10 weeks and you say hey i want to do this or would you like to do this they're much more receptive and open and then you don't just have a student you build hopefully a good working relationship and you have a, yeah. hopefully a fan and a supporter for the, the long term. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's now hear from our special guest today, Jesse and May, who are going to share with us how to build community online with our clients and students. Hi, Jesse and May. Thank you so much for joining us today on ESL Talk. Thank you for Hello. having us. Yay, Thank hi. you for having us. <laughs> yeah, I'm really glad you're able to join us and bring your skills and expertise to the podcast today. Yeah, so first of all, um, I'd love to know this, and I think our, our listeners as well. Could you tell us a little bit about your teaching journeys, your business together and all that? Um, it's, it's kind of funny. Uh, May and I met in Korea, even though we're both from Toronto. And then through that, our teaching journey and career has been the same, almost pretty much exactly worked at the same schools, the same colleges. Mm -hmm. And then we became really close. And then we decided that we wanted to start our own business together. Mm -hmm. um, and that's really how much the journey started. And then we hired a business coach to um, help us. We took some you know, a 21 day challenge. And then through that, we realized that we love helping teachers. And mm -hmm. that's how it ended up being our niche and, you know, our deal clientele. And since then, it's been really great. I think. Yeah. That, May, you want to add to it? Yeah. And, and, and our business name is called Jam with Confidence. And so some of you may be wondering, where did we get Jam from? So J comes from Jesse and M comes from from May. And so that's why we kind of thought of something creative to have fun mm -hmm. with it, because we're all about, you know, having fun, empowering teachers and feeling positive. And so we wanted something to kind of reflect that. And so once again, we're all about helping teachers, empowering them and really, you know, see having them see their potential because we know and we see it and we want them to believe in themselves and so we kind of help them through that so you do a little bit of coaching for mostly for language teachers is that it yes mm -hmm. yes it has been mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um we started off actually working with like ESL teachers um, mm -hmm. or EFL teachers but lately we're noticing that we're just helping teachers in general no, <laughs> where they don't just teach English skills because at the end of the day we're helping with teaching skills mm -hmm. um, and ESL was part of just our experiences and that's what we started off with slowly transitioning because um, we mm -hmm. realized it can be applicable in any teaching environment um, mm -hmm. that you are in. It's been amazing and yeah Jesse and May do great things so do check them out because um, I've been lucky enough to attend some of their sessions and I've learned a lot of really valuable skills too. Mm -hmm. um, so today we've been talking about building connection, um, especially in the online space. So um, Jesse May, why do you feel building a connection is so important in the online space? So um, I kind of just want to, you know, emphasize, you know, right now, because everything has been online and mm -hmm. some students or your clients um, are isolated in their own environment. And so it can kind of be nerve wracking because we spent so many years teaching in person. So, you know, when you go to an in-person class, you have these expectations, you have an idea of what class is supposed to be like. However, in an online environment, it's kind of nerve wracking because you've never met anyone mm -hmm. and you're not really in close contact. You're like behind a screen. And so we find it so important to try to build that connection even more crucial online first so the students can feel comfortable because right not right away everybody's comfortable turning on their camera for example mm -hmm. and that already kind of loses the connection so you try mm -hmm. to build it so that 
they feel vulnerable, you know, comfortable enough to be vulnerable and to learn. And when they're comfortable, they learn better too, and they're more engaged. And so this is why we find that it's so important to try to build that connection first. Yeah, Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, Could you maybe share with us some of the more effective ways to do this to build that connection and maybe make students feel more at ease? Yeah, um, so there's a few things that we've done. We've done learner questionnaires. So just before the class begins, uh, Mm -hmm. we would send out a Google form and ask a a few set of questions to kind of get to know them, but also allow them to understand the kind of expectations of the classroom. Um, Even on the first day, we think it's very valuable to actually do icebreakers, but more importantly, also share like a little bit of knowledge about yourself because uh, if this, do students are able to relate to you and able to know you a little bit more and know that you're a human, I think mm-hmm. it counts a lot. And so having that activity, whether it's two truths and a lie, we love doing this activity a lot. Um, they get to know you a little bit and then they realize that, hey, I can talk to her. She's relatable. There's something that uh, uh, there's something we have in common. So uh, those were those are ma- two main things that we kind of would do. And I don't know if there's any, any other activities that Jesse would also implement. Um. I also like to point out to um, as may speaking is when you're doing this connection or icebreakers don't be afraid to make it more personable. Mm -hmm. Um, It doesn't have to be your professional experiences right because it's great to share where your experience come from but what really connects you and the student are some personal things that you're comfortable with you have Mm -hmm. to find what level your comfort sharing, um, you know, whether it's travel your hobbies your family, anything that you're comfortable with do it Mm -hmm. like don't Mm -hmm. feel like there should be a barrier barrier there because at the end of the day we all love that human connection especially because it's online and you don't know what situations they're in with the pandemic too so the having that personal question you might be the highlight of their day uh, Mm -hmm. with classes and that's just something to really think about and something that May and I have realized as we're coaching our clients too and what they've revealed throughout the sessions that we have with them and so this is just something to be mindful of Mm -hmm. uh, when you are introducing yourself even right away. Mm -hmm. That's a great point I I love two truths and a lie as well and I always try to add like something a little easier like about my family something very relatable but I always try to add at least one sentence that's almost like a, a trick one, but also something a little bit, maybe like a guilty pleasure or something a bit embarrassing. <laughs> yeah. about myself. Yes. Because then, mm-hmm. then the students feel like they can do the same. Yes. Right? Yes. 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 I love it. Yeah, um, that's and, crucial. You know, stories are great. Like share your fun mm-hmm. stories. Share something embarrassing. Yes. Share, you know, if you've learned a new language, share that too, especially mm-hmm. in the ESL environment. So they can be like, oh, it's okay that I can make mistakes. Yeah. Um, and sometimes what I like to do is, you know, if, they want to teach me something in their language just off the bat in the beginning. I try to pronounce it and they think it's so funny because you've got an accent and then they they loosen up and the more fun when they're loosened up, they they will share more. And then Mm -hmm. that's a way you can help better serve them with their, you know, issues or things in the class or it, everything just becomes easier once you have a connection. That's a um, great idea, yeah. yeah. I like that mm-hmm. idea of the language, yeah. <laughs> it's really nice, some really mm-hmm. practical applications. Um, so obviously those are things that would work in a first class or maybe, you know, when you're beginning a course or a program with students. So maybe before that, maybe we're, you know, trying to promote our services or promote our classes or our course. And we want to obviously, I don't, I don't want to say sell, but we want to work with that student. So how could we build connection in that very short time when we do have a goal, but obviously the student has a goal as well? How do we balance those two things? Oh, that's a great question. I think um, it just really comes down to bringing your stories to life because at the end of the day, everyone has something to share. And once you're able to understand, once you're able to share your story, people can really relate to it or make a comment about it and kind of be part of the story in some way because, you know, you'd be surprised at the amount of people that actually read your story and get inspired and they actually want to comment. So a lot of times you make the assumption that, oh, no, no one wants to hear what I have to say but you know just the other day I posted something about my you know my experience with social media and I was surprised I got like 80 likes and comments and so you'd be surprised at how the how they're kind of related to each other so be vulnerable and share it because you know there might be different people who really need to hear that today or who want to you know be part of it and kind of share their stories because you are taking that first step you're taking the first step to be vulnerable and 
to be open and they also feel safe enough to to kind of comment and share their experiences and so mm-hmm. I think yeah. that would be the first step I think also like don't always focus hey I just want to share my successes my wins mm-hmm. or share all the positive things mm-hmm. also share all the things that may have gone wrong something that mm-hmm. you learned from it um, and it could be something so simple like in your classes or even in your personal life and then relate it to your business as well after right mm-hmm. but when you share that it's it's relatable it's like hey we're not all perfect um it's never always like it's always good 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 in a business or an entrepreneur journey it's Mm -hmm. up and downs so share those downs too and share those up because then people feel like oh it's not just me and it really helps them connect and make them feel like hey i'm not the only one in this like you Mm -hmm. aren't alone we're all in this together and Mm -hmm. we're all about building that community and this is how you can build your community when you're starting out on your own as well um Yeah, that makes a lot of sense because now with our lives online and a lot of us end up when you start, let's say, an an Instagram account or something to advertise your services, it ends up being very, um, I'd say, like cold and just business oriented and just I'm going to teach you a word a day or something. But students choose teachers a lot based on those connections, right? Mm -hmm. It's just somebody they want to have classes with. So, yeah, that's very important. Now, how do you think we can now t- turning more to our teaching? How do you think mm-hmm. we can build these connections through our curricula? So is that possible to do that? Most definitely. Yeah. There, there's so many ways in your lesson that you can definitely integrate, you know, little short activities to kind of get to know them. You can use prompting questions. It can be related to the activity. There's going to be there. there. Yeah, there's um, an abundance of ways. So Jessie can share some because she has some experience with that. <laughs> um, I like to take uh, more personal. So let's say mm-hmm. if they share something simple, like, hey, um, I love dancing. Mm-hmm. And then so, you know, when you're teaching a concept or something, you can use analogies related to dancing, if that's something mm-hmm. you can relate to. And those kind of things are like, oh, I get it now. Or mm-hmm. like they, they, they like our students really love it when we use their names in our product, yes, in our yes. content. Right. And you add those in and then they're like, oh, ha, 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 look, there's Jesse there, you know, or something like that. Mm-hmm. And then that's and then they're just like they find it funny or, you know, if you're teaching something about the future. I'm just thinking more mm-hmm. English. Like, but even mm-hmm. when in a coaching session, mm-hmm. um, the situations that you're giving, you make it really relatable to what they've shared with mm-hmm. you. And mm-hmm. this is why when you have that connection, you've got all their stories. Use them yes. in your content. Use their words because at the end of the day, you want to connect with them using their language mm-hmm. so it's understandable to them. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's one thing that I really like integrating in. Yeah. And then yeah, they like so it because they're like, oh, you remembered something that I told yeah. you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, very true. Right? And they we feel often are heard. Preparing. Yeah, and we prep yes. your classes and you prepare your example sentences or your practice <laughs> exercises, right? That's a great tip. Mm-hmm. Just instead of writing just John and Judy and whatnot. Yes. Yeah, using the students and their situations. That's great. It's Jesse or me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. It also makes them pay attention. They're like, oh, Jesse just used my name. I think she knows. <laughs> yeah. That's, <laughs> so <can> do. yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> So the um, the next thing I wanted to ask you, and this is this is kind of something I've been through myself. So I'm really curious <laughs> to hear how you guys feel about this. Um, you know, a lot of teachers identify themselves as quiet or shy, or I'm introverted. It's not my thing. And like I, I still remember when I did my first online class like three years ago, I was petrified. I was sweating. My face was red. I was like, I can't do this. <laughs> but I got through it. And then you know, like every time we talk, you know, we we have guests and we do our podcast, you know. I don't consciously think there's thousands of people listening to this or, you know, Mm -hmm. like, like last week I was on TV, it was terrifying, but I was like, I did it. (laughs) So what, what's some, what is some um, piece of advice or some tips that you can give to teachers to help them, you know, get better at building those connections and be, maybe be the person they want to be so that they can have really good connections with students. Oh man, I love that you have this question because I'm an introvert myself. I know how you feel, Daniel. Like I am, I would be sweating, but you wouldn't know. I'd be like put on this like teacher face, but um, (laughs) I completely understand where you're coming from. So I think what, what, um, what helped me was to overcome this is really knowing that I have a choice. I have a choice in terms of what I want to share. And, and also it's also important about my energy too. If I know that I've had such a long day, I know I have to set those boundaries and say like, Hey, I understand you're dealing with this right now, but Hey, can we speak about this tomorrow? Like the next day? Cause you know, you as an introvert, you're always 
giving a lot of energy. And so it's really, you need that time to recharge. And so I think understanding that ha being able to recharge and setting those boundaries is crucial when, when it comes to, you know, stepping out and making those connections, because you would rather be in a, a more, I guess, positive energy than having being so drained and tired all the time. So knowing yourself would be one thing and knowing that you have a choice in choosing what you want to post and who you want to connect with. It matters as well because you want to work with, for me, I, I connect with people who vibe with my energy. If they don't vibe with me, then there's there's a more chance that I'm going to be drained by them. And so I'm kind of, I'm very selective in who I would like to connect with because I know that I can't spread my energy for everybody. And so I'm I'm very particular just only because it's only fair for them. And so that's one thing that I've I've done to kind of be mindful of that. Um, and I also like to add to. Uh... We always, May and I always talk about this reciprocal energy yes. that we do bring into the classroom. So let's say, you know, before class, you're not feeling very good. Something personal is happening. Who knows what's going on? Take even 10 minutes for yourself to do something just for you to change your mood. Because when you come in tired, your students feel it. And then what's going to end up happening? They're going to be a little bit tired. They're going to be like, oh, class is kind of, uh, you know, versus when you do something for yourself, like, I don't know, have a cup of coffee or May likes to have a banana. <laughs> um, or I, used, I like to do yoga even for 10 minutes just to feel a little refreshed going in with like that positive high energy. So then the students, you know, get excited, right? They're like, oh, there's this like bubbly. Well, I'm more bubbly <laughs> and kind of loud sometimes. And they're like, oh, yeah. And then they respond. <laughs> really well to it and they get excited even when you do a simple activity like writing and they're like oh but that's still like a positive edge because they'll still do it and they're mm -hmm. reacting um and so this is something that you have to find to do for yourself before you start the class mm -hmm. and bring in energy when we're talking about teaching solely online or having your own teaching business which i think all of us are experiencing right now um how will connecting with our clients help us with our business side of things it's so important. I think yeah. it definitely, like the more that you're able to connect and learn more about your client, the more likely you can better help serve them. And mm. what we mean by that is that um, once you kind of understand their situation and you really make the effort to be an attentive listener and to really get to know how you, their issues and their problems, it really helps you build a program that aligns with their needs and to also solve their immediate problem. And we're all about that. So it's kind of similar to the concept of like how to assess your student first. And be before you take on a student, you need to know where they're at, right? Mm -hmm. You need to understand um, you need to understand what it is that they're having difficulties with. And then from there, you solve that immediate need so that they can move on from it. So we feel that like building that connection and communicating with your clients is so crucial because it can, it helps you give it, it gives you the clarity that you need to build a program that you can definitely uh, sell with ease and so this is what we're all about we're all about building that connection getting to know the clients empowering them but also giving them the tools and strategies that they need to move forward based on the, the immediate need that they have mm -hmm. so. and also building that connection makes them feel more open to sharing mm -hmm. because right off the bat if you just ask a very personal question they'd be like oh that's too mm -hmm. much like I don't know what to say right versus if you build that connection you can slowly add in those um, follow-up questions that really get them to dig deep and then they'll feel more comfortable sharing or more things will come up um, than you expected and the more you know the better your program is going to be mm -hmm. and the better you can help them and this is why that initial connection is so important. One, one other point I just wanted to kind of touch on with this is a lot of the time we're scared or we're worried that if we try to have a conversation or ask questions, we might come across as a phony or a fraud, you know, we're, we're not quite being genuine or honest with ourselves. Mm -hmm. So how could we maybe in, make sure that doesn't happen? Or what are some things we could do to maybe make sure we do come across as genuine, helpful, caring I feel like it's just really reading what the person is saying rather than like having the thought like I need to make a sale, I need to get them on a call. I think if you really read what they're they're telling you and what their issues are and you're kind of giving them that time and holding that space for them to kind of share this, um, you know, come from a place of help. Come from mm -hmm. like, okay, I see that you are struggling with this and, you know, I really want to help you. So if you don't feel comfortable going onto, onto the call just yet, like just 
have that conversation and just think of it as a friend that you're trying to help. I think mm -hmm. it really would help you there to see it like that rather than trying to like, I need this person on a call and to sell this. So mm -hmm. um, that that would be my strategy. I would kind of really read through it and see where it is I can help them and help them guide them to find solutions rather right. than like, you yeah. know, and, and we can help, help everyone, right? Yes. We will try our best, but there are just some students that we, we don't mm -hmm. fit well with. And yes. we have to understand that too, I think. Mm -hmm. And also like finding out if they really need your program because sometimes mm -hmm. they might be looking for something completely different. And that's your job, you know, as someone that's coming from a place of help to refer them to someone if you know, mm -hmm. or tell, give them some maybe useful links and be like, hey, maybe you can look in this direction, because it's kind of different from what I do with my yes. program. Mm -hmm. um, and when you do something like that, when I started shifting my mindset to that, sales became easier. Like mm -hmm. it gets to be easy. It doesn't have to be so hard. And I used to get so nervous because I'm like, oh, there's a script that I'm following or whatever, mm -hmm. but it doesn't come out natural. And then, and then it just messes up the whole, you know, energy and they know it. Like people know when you're trying to sell mm -hmm. versus you're there to really help. And so just changing your intention before going on a chat or something, it so even with writing, like everything do the way you do one things is the way you should do all things mm -hmm. so even with writing go in hey i'm here to help let's see what kind of issues they might be having let me help with writing because it shows in your writing as well mm -hmm. a lot of people don't think so but mm -hmm. it does because right? yeah. it's how you're intending to write and then how it comes out when the person's reading it mm -hmm. and so that's just something to think about mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah mindset i guess rather than what we say but what we're thinking while we're saying it and yeah. our intention that's really important yeah it's yeah. a great point amazing mm -hmm. incredible great advice so where can our listeners um find out more about what you offer and maybe get in touch and reach out to you guys if they want to learn more um so we have a facebook group uh that we call uh, badass esl teachers who empower and on there we're all about you know creating that community for so we already um we started doing weekly little videos of tips so you can go back and watch and all our workshops that we have on our the replays are all on there. So it's something that you can kind of get started. And then our website link is also on there. So if you're interested in our programs that we offer right now, me and I are doing our pilot program called Get Lit with Program Planning. <laughs> and so this is where um, if you kind of want to do it as a side hustle um, or become an online, you know, coach for maybe ESL or other teaching things that you do that you're good at, we really help you kind of narrow down who you want to work with for your ideal client. So you can create a program framework that you love, and then you can sell. And so you can find that on there. Um, we can always send you the link and you can share. We'll I think Facebook the, is yeah. the best place we'll, to start. We'll be more mm -hmm. than happy to share everything in the um, program description. So yeah, the mm -hmm. listeners can find that there as well. Yeah, it'll be on our website description of the episode. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Great. Thank you so much for joining us today, guys. I had an yeah. amazing time. I learned so much. <laughs> Thank yeah. you so much for having us. All Thank right. you so much Thank for you. having us. Thank you for being yeah. here. Wow. Thanks, Jesse and May. There's some incredible insights that I really learned a lot, uh, as I'm sure we all did. Yes, that was an awesome interview. So please get in touch with us on Instagram if you'd like to share your thoughts on today's episode. You can find us at ESL Talk Podcast. You can also send us an email to esltalkpodcast at gmail.com, or you can visit our brand new website to access all of our previous episodes from seasons one, two, and three, and now four, for free. Just go to esl-talk.com and you can join us individually on Instagram. Find me at learning with Faye, Faye is F-E-Y. Or oh, I'm Daniel Teacher. All right. Thanks everyone for listening. See you next time. Bye-bye.